Hey guys, Rollout here. This is not the let's build anyone was expecting, and allow me to explain. So, for over a year now, I have been promising let's builds on Takanuva and Makuta, and the plan for those videos ever since has been constantly changing. The idea now is that those will be kind of a vessel for me to release the floodgates into, and with complete honesty, discuss everything about G2. What went wrong, what went right, and everything in between. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna talk, and we'll see how that goes. But right now, I just, I just need a break. <laughs> I just need to stop constantly thinking about G2. For over a year, it's all that's been on my mind. I just, I just need, I just need to cut myself off and erase all obligation and just stop thinking about it because I've been slowly but surely writing these reviews. I've been, you know, comparing and contrasting with G1 and I've been, I've been thinking about how I want to approach my videos, discussing it, and I've, it's just all I've been thinking about and I need, I need to stop. I need to take a moment and just think about something else. So today we're not going to talk about G2 at all, except for, you know, the past couple of minutes that I've just been talking about it. Um, yeah, okay, well, today we're just going to discuss G1. We're just going to build this set and, and think about other things. So, hey look, it's Karzani. This is quite a expensive slash rare set. It's a little bit hard to find, even used, and a little while ago, I somehow found it sealed for way cheaper than I should have been able to get it. I got really lucky. Um, so we're just going to open it and experience this set for the first time because I've I've never had this set before. I've never built it. This is going to be a little bit like my Toa Mata Nui Let's Build where um, for those of you who can't afford this set or never got a chance to check it out, this is going to be a way for you to see what it's all about, I suppose. And I am going to be experiencing it for the first time as well. I've always intended to buy this set used, but I I found it sealed for so cheap that I couldn't pass it up. The box is definitely uh, a little worse for wear, but that's all right. We're just going to open it and build it anyway. Uh, I've got uh, Dekar and Defilac here just for show. I'll finally have, you know, my four Mari Nui Matoran complete here. Uh, Defilac's mask is a little... A little banged up, unfortunately, but oh well. I'm gonna set these off to the side, and uh, I don't know, let's just jump right in. I have actually opened the set. Um, I had to open it just to make sure that everything was there, all of the bags were there, because again, I got this for an almost unreasonably cheap price, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting ripped off or something, <laughs> so. I did already crack the seal on that. I would show off the box a little bit more, but like this is gigantic and I don't have too much space. So we're just gonna throw that off to the side um, and take a look at all the bags. Actually, first, I'm gonna set all of these off to the side. I'll do a, a quick cut later um, and we'll open up all these bags once I pan the camera down. But first, let's just skim through the instructions. Cool, here we go. Only one booklet, but it's, you know, quite substantial. Here he is. Here is Karzani. A sealed set we're opening up for the first time, which is always exciting. So first we start out with Sarda and Idris, and then it goes right into building Karzani. He's also got this weird, like, well, I suppose the Matoran have this, like, weird trap thing, which we don't build until the end. Um, I might just go ahead and build this before I build Karzani. I don't know how long this is going to take. It might be two parts, just like my Toa Mata Nui Let's Build. I suppose we'll see. Bag number one. 
Let's go. Here are most of the parts for just the Matoran. However, I think we're also gonna need at least a couple of things from this bag as well, which is unnumbered. So I guess we'll open this up first. I believe all we're gonna need is two of these tubes. Set those there and we'll come back to all of this later. Okay, cracking the seal. Here we go. There's no going back, boys. <laughs> Woo, okay. That is a unique kind of feeling, isn't it? This is 10 years old now? What? Okay, I just had that realization. <sighs> 10 years. Mari Nui was 10 years ago. Open. Open! Tiny parts. Okay. Awesome. So let's take a look at some of the cool parts here. Um, I don't think this is anything new. So, all right. Although, I'm not sure if before then this piece was actually a solid color. Because... I'm vaguely recalling that it was dual injected on the previous sets it was in. Here is the thing everyone wants. <laughs> it's uh, Winua's mask in dark blue here, which is a very unique and very cool color. This set is full of things like this, which is super awesome. Fortunately, uh, Sarda's mask is only you know, just like a normal Vakama mask. No recolor or anything. It would have been cool if this was like uh, the like normal red color rather than the darker shade. But anyway, it's nice to see this like so pristine. <laughs> um, I don't think I've seen Vakama's mask in, you know, that good condition in quite a while. So uh, these guys should just be built exactly like the, the previous two Matoran I showed off, so built a couple of these before. Shouldn't be uh, that complicated, but let's get started. I always found it a little bit disappointing that uh, the Hydruka, the, the other small sets here, were also red and blue. Like, it would have been cooler to me if, let's see, what were the other colors we needed to have, like, a complete uh, color spectrum of small sets for that year? I think we needed, a, an like, an Onumatoran and a, not a Limatoran, we had Defilac. What, what else was it? Uh, I'm blanking, I'm blanking. Uh... <laughs> We needed a, uh, no, we had Pomatorin, we had a fire, and, 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 and what, and a Comatorin, we needed a Comatorin, that's it. Um, and I always found it odd that, like, they didn't take that opportunity, I either made this an Onumatorin and a Comatorin in this set, or made the Hydruka, uh, white and black. That would have made more sense to me, especially since the Hydruka were always super lame, in my opinion. They're literally just water cattle. Like, wow, so exciting. They, like, <laughs> I guess they give the Matoran of Marinui air and whatever. But, uh, and I, well, <laughs> and whatever. I suppose that's pretty important to the story, but, um, I don't know. Just feel like, like, I always thought the Hydruka were villains. As, as a kid, honestly, um, well, when I first saw them and then as I started to read about them, I suppose it, it was slightly underwhelming that they were literally just like water cows, but oh well. This guy has different feet than the other two. I guess the idea is that Sarda and Idris are like a little bit more mutated by the waters of the pit than the other two Matoran. Because they have like the little, you know, gill things, little like gill tubes, 
and they have like Sarda, I think, here has like a claw. Um so that's 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 neat. <laughs> uh, I always liked the Mari Nui Matoran build, honestly, because like it wasn't as it's not as stumpy as the uh, as the Voya Nui Matoran, but it still has like more articulation technically. You know, than anything else. They look a little bit more dynamic and the build is a little bit more complex, I think, than the uh, Metru Matoran or the Av Matoran. So, I thought it was a, a, a nice balance. Although, I, I feel like the uh, the Voyanui Matoran still get, you know, more points for, like, interest value. What? Okay, that's weird. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> I I didn't see this piece here, and I thought they like put one of these in the other bag from earlier, and then one of these in this bag. That was a silly thought, but for a moment, crossed my mind. So he's got this like this weird like dual claw thing. That's kind of strange, and then this claw over here. These Matoran actually have eyes, so that's something. The other Mari Matoran don't have those. But I suppose they need them to attach these tubes. So, hey. Um, Alright, that goes on there. And then we have this little extra piece that attaches the tube, I guess. Oh, I don't like this. See... These, like, 07 style connectors here, they have, like, this this little, like, indent here, and I always like to hide that on anything that I put together for some reason. I don't know, it's just a little thing I have. But I'd always prefer that to be hidden by, like, an armor piece or otherwise. Okay. So... Now, this goes here, and I assume, okay, this feeds through there, and then goes into the back of his leg. Look at that. Finally give him his mask, and there you go. Hmm. These little, like... Jowls, I guess you'd call them, uh, kind of get in the way of like the Hordika chest piece here a little bit. That's interesting. Oh well, I guess he's not like looking up or anything permanently. He's just kind of a little hindered. But there is Sarda. Set him off to the side for just a moment. Let's build his friend. You know, obviously, like, even though Sarda is a, uh, a Gamma Torin, I've always had a hard time, like, imagining them as a, a girl, just because of the mask choice, where, and one more of these, guys, where is it? Hello? Hello? Oh, there it is. It's way over here. <laughs> Maybe it was a, a bad decision putting all the pieces so far in this direction. <laughs> or just, like, not putting all of the contents of the smaller bag, like, in a separate area. Oh, well. I made the decision to do this a little less orderly than I've been doing Let's Builds previously. Uh... And I suppose I'll stick with that decision. Alright, so this is basically just second verse, same as the first for the most part. Except with all these nice translucent pieces instead. So that's kind of cool. 
Okay, let's get you out of the way so we can turn the page. Um, all right, yeah, she's also got different feet, of course, here. I'll do a comparison with the uh, the two other Matoran once we're done. It, it just always was kind of weird to me that, like, Dekar and Defilac were separate sets, but they're so similar in comparison to Sarda and Idris, who are in the same set, but quite different, with, like, their different feet, and, like, these are translucent. It always seemed, like, it always seemed backwards to me. And, uh... I also, like, I've never gotten the Hydruka, because, like I said, uh, <laughs> they, they always just seem kind of underwhelming to me in a lot of ways. Um, so I still haven't, at the time of this recording, gotten those guys. Um, but hey, maybe they'll warm up to me uh, if I do get around to getting them eventually. I do appreciate that with this set, like, there were in the end, six, like, small sets for the year between, uh, these two guys, or guy and a girl, uh, and then, uh, Defilac, Dekar, which it always was weird to me that they had, they both had names that started with, like, De, <laughs> um, but oh well, that's just, like, a minor nitpick at best. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, it was kind of, kind of weird to me. Um, but the, yeah, in the end, we got six total. I just wish that, uh, their colors were a little bit different. Because again, blue and red, it's the same, uh, it's the same separation that the Hydruka have, instead of something unique. So, bittersweet, I guess. But anyway, almost done. That goes through there. I'm just assuming it's the same. Yeah, it is the same, okay. And last but not least, the mask. Ta-da, there she is. Pretty cool. I like this like longer sword better than the little daggers that the other two Matoran have. She's really cool. The color scheme looks great too. Black and dark blue and translucent blue. Like, you can't go wrong with that, I don't think. Anyway, there is Idris. Let's bring Sarda back. Actually, let me get the instructions out of the way so I can do a group shot of all four of the Matoran. So there they are. Then here is. Dekar, and Deflack. Let's actually put him in front because he's, you know, the leader for that one book. Although I don't think these guys were in that book. Ah, oh, they might have been. I don't remember. It's been a while. Bag number five. Yes, I'm taking some initiative and doing things out of order. Uh, I'd like to build this thing first, and, and then save Karzani for last instead of the other way around. Uh, most of the pieces for this trap thing are in here, however, a lot of the blades and such are in this other bag. Uh, there's two of these bags, you saw the one previously, and this is another one that is not numbered. Uh, let's open this right up. Okay, so I think we need most of these things. I believe the only thing we don't need is the squid launcher here. So we'll set that off to the side. Um, yeah, I don't think Karzani himself uses any of these, but I could be wrong. I could be completely and totally wrong. Anyway, let's set them off to the side. And, uh... Open up this bag.
awesome. All right, so I'm actually going to use this and put these small pieces in there. Gonna open that off camera because it's easier. So I don't misplace any of these tiny bits like I did before. Throw that over there. Okay, and you know what? Might as well take a couple of these smaller pieces and throw them in as well. Uh, Alright, whatever. Guess that's good enough. Alright. Set these over here. And let's get started. Alright, so this thing uh, is like a trap built by the Matoran and Lezovic to uh, capture Karzani, I guess? I don't, I don't exactly remember a whole lot from the serial that this is from, uh, besides, like, Lezovic being edgy and it ultimately being pretty disappointing in the end. Uh, <laughs> Greg Farshti did that a lot, where he, like, set up these interesting set of circumstances and then just, like, wouldn't follow through with it at all. Uh, don't even get me started about <laughs> Mazika and Voltraz. I'm still salty about that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's probably for the best. Um, but yeah, this thing wasn't in the story a whole lot, and then, like, if I recall correctly, didn't, didn't really go anywhere? I mean... I don't know. I don't recall if they actually catched him in this thing, and if they did, <laughs> he escaped, and then Makuta just, like, destroyed his mind with mental powers. That's, that's all I remember. 2007 was weird, because, I mean, it had these sets, like, Lezovic and, and this one, which, like, literally only existed in the online serials. These sets did, like, not make an appearance in, uh, in the books or comics at all, which was kind of an interesting approach. Was there any other, was there any other set like that before this? I mean, in, uh, in 2008, you know, uh, Voltraz and Mazika were kind of similar, but, uh, yeah, before this, I'm not sure if that was... What was a thing? Off the top of my head, I don't think so. Hey, stay. Um, in fact, actually, let's put on this bushing to stop that from happening again. Can you still see everything? Is everything all right? I haven't looked in the viewfinder for a little while. It sometimes starts to worry me. But I think we're good. Okay, so make sure these bushings are all lined up. Let's actually put it on this way. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, cool. So we've got, like, just the thing so far. And I don't think it's gonna start looking like much for a little while, if ever, because this contraption is just kind of a jumble of parts and blades, <laughs> from what I can tell. But hey, maybe it'll have a cool gimmick or something. We'll see. That goes on there, like that. Still, uh, still not looking like a whole lot. But now, we got some piston action. Okay, so I need a ball joint. There we go. And then this goes on here, and that slides on there. It's always cool. Best thing, one of the best things I think to come out of 2006 is these pistons. Although maybe they were slightly overused, I don't know. It was just cool to have like a, like a functioning piston on a Bionicle set after so long having like molded in pistons into everything. All 
right, that goes there. Still, still not sure what uh, what these have to do with anything, but we're getting somewhere, I guess. Another one of these. that and that okay I do actually have Lezovic uh, he's up on a shelf somewhere <laughs> and uh, I'm not really all that inclined to go get him just for this video I, I don't I don't even think I have his little sled thing built I think it's just a bag of parts somewhere because like I don't generally display a lot of my Bionicle characters with vehicles like with their vehicles it just takes up sh so much shelf space to do that um, although I have made some exceptions like I hang the uh, Axelara, Jetrax, and Rocco from the ceiling because those are impressive and cool but things like the Usanui and uh, and again, like Lezovic's lame little sled thing. I don't, I generally don't bother displaying those. Like even uh, the Rahi, like uh, Lee Khan's Kikanalo and uh, Nevok. Like I don't, I don't generally display those. I don't even like have uh Finrak built, I instead have uh, Cardass built because it's much more impressive. And ironically, even though it's freaking massive, it takes up less shelf space than, uh, than Fenrak because the legs aren't as long and such. Okay, what's... how does this attach? Probably should have built this the way the instructions are telling me to build it and not like however I want. <laughs> Kind of like backwards engineering it compared to what the instructions are telling me to do because I'm looking at this picture instead of over here It's probably not the best way to do things but all right How's this how's this go goes like that? All right, what does this accomplish? Oh, probably like that or something. Okay Cool Oh, and then we build another one all right, great, fantastic. Let's uh, let's build it properly this time. We've got a second chance. Uh, still, still not, still not following the order of operations. All right, I'm bad at this. And then, and then. There, there, and I... <sighs> nope, that was right. Never mind. Ignore me. And then... Bam. And bam. Awesome. And this... Goes on the other side. And then that goes on there for a little extra flavor. Cool. And then... Then what? Oh. Oh, exciting. Big claws. Let's just add big claws. That's like a third of Bionicle, probably. You know what this needs? Spikes and blades everywhere. What do we call him? Hydraxon. It's like Axon, but in the water. And not the same character, because... Are you kidding me? I need to build a second one of these. Great. Awesome. Excellent. <clears throat> Did it tell me that I needed to build two of these back here? Nope, it waited until here. Alright. Did it tell me... earlier that I needed to build... Yeah, it did. Okay. Well... Well... Second verse. Same as the first. Set all this over here so we've got more room. Bah, humbug. All right. 
I could be building Karzani right now, but I made the decision to build this. This forgettable thing, which, like, probably I'm probably not even going to display this. I'm probably just going to, like, take this apart and put it in a box somewhere. <laughs> but the people deserve to know. They must know the trials and tribulations of this set. Um, okay, hopefully this will go smoother than the first time around. Now you would think, you would think that, right? We'll see. We'll see. I'll be the judge of that. Cool. And let's actually build these properly this time. All right, so first this, then this, then this. And then, then what? Oh, I just saw these pieces in here and I'm not sure what those are gonna be used for. Okay. I was like, did it, was one of these supposed to be that piece? And I've been, you know, messing up this whole time. Wouldn't put it past me. Seems like something I'd do. All right, cool. We did it properly. And then this goes here and here, and then we build another one. Cool. Bam. Bam. You know what? I'm getting I'm getting sick of this. Get out of here. You're not helping anymore. Might be nice for you to, you know, stop hearing a clatter every four seconds as well. A little more peaceful, just grabbing from a pile. I want this to match the instructions, orientation. Cool. Boom. And then, just like before, stick some spikes on it. Great, now we got two of them. And then those, let's see. This thing is gonna be pretty big actually. Uh, uh huh, like this? Yeah, that goes on there. Okay, this thing is gonna be huge actually. That goes on there. And then these go here. And here. Now what? Jeez, that's slightly terrifying, honestly. Um, now what? Oh, oh, these little tubes from the first bag. Oh, and that's what those are used for. Cool. All right. So these... Little doodads go on the end there. Do this twice. And that plugs on like that and then goes into the back here. Now why would a trap like this need uh, these tubes? <clears throat> Seems a little arbitrary, but all right. Turn it around. And then add more spikes. Awesome. <laughs> so these, let's see, go here and here. 
Where do the other ones go? Wait, what? Where, where do the other two go? Oh, up here. Interesting. Okay. So those go up like that, and then spike, spike. more spike and final spike then you got this thing all right let's get all this out of here and see how this works e okay awesome go away instructions what the heck is this this is like some eldritch horror that closes up like that and I guess these pistons let it move up and down. Okay. Oh, huh. Okay. Like this. Oh, so it's like a tripod. All right. And then you got that. Great. <laughs> Excellent. I guess it needs to be big enough to like grab onto Karzani in the end. Um, well, it is a thing. Okay, back to bag number two, so we can finally build Karzani himself, who in simple terms is the Toa Nuva's crazy uncle, who is also literally Satan, and is then turned into a fish man. So, <clears throat> that's cool. Bionicle is kind of weird. Anyway, uh, let's see, we need all the things from this, we also need these red tubes. So open it up. I think everybody wishes that we got, like, a real, like, full-power Karzani from 06 instead of this. <laughs> like, it's cool that we got him at all, I suppose, but I want, like, super crazy Satan man from, like, literal Bionicle hell. Uh, that was like the peak of edginess in Bionicle, wasn't it? Like, oh man, there are waterfalls of, like, dust, and people turn into statues if they stay still for too long, and a guy, like, pulls apart Matoran and rebuilds them into monstrosities. Yup, that was a thing that really happened. Great. Excellent. And like I said, he's also technically the uncle of the Toa Nuva, because he's Artaka's brother. Artaka, the creator of the Mata and all of that. Yeah. You know. Even though they're like technically different species, and like what makes Artaka and Karzani brothers when like Helrix was also created specifically by the great beings and, and she's a Toa but not considered their sister yeah I don't know I don't think they thought that far but hey you gotta have like the the, the fallen brother and like you know biblical <laughs> uh, parallels and whatnot there, so, hey, that's cool, that's fine, I do wish we got, uh, what was it, what was Karzani's mask, which one, uh, was it the Olisi, or was that, was, was that something else, I don't remember, it was a cool looking mask in that one book where we saw what it looked like, and uh, it kind of looked like Kongu's mask, like a little bit, like, Anika Kongu. Um, maybe they like based it off of that. I've seen some pretty cool customs of it, and I'm sure you can probably get it on Shapeways. Um, but instead, we got Fishman Karzani, who, who admittedly is a, a pretty cool set. Like the parts usage and recolors that this set has are awesome. Like really legitimately cool. And, uh, Especially once we get to the legs and stuff, I think 
and the, and the head as well. Um, you'll get to see kind of like the parts usage and, and recolors at their fullest potential. Uh, this piece here, at least, I think was also reused in at least one other thing, if I recall correctly. Maybe this is a recolor. I I'm not sure. Um, people always correct me in the comments anyway, so not too worried about getting that wrong. <laughs> It's all about being chill in these videos. Okay, so we got these things. Little spikes. He's got little spikes all over him. He's literally, literally edgy. So that's cool. That's fun. Wordplay. Um, can I? No, I think these just go here. Like this? Yeah, like that. Okay. Um, and then that goes here. That goes here. And boom. We got that. That almost looks like a body, although not really. Not yet. <laughs> Uh, more of this action happening. Tubes. 2007 in short, tubes. Tubes everywhere. It's pretty much all you need to know. No dramatic sacrifices or world ending events happen, don't worry. And then he's got these little, like, chest mandibles. I Like, these little, like, blades, like, on his torso. Kind of looks like a face. Like an alien face. <laughs> Alright. Um, and I think, like, honestly, that's it for this bag. So, uh, let me get these extra pieces out of the way. And I guess we'll move on to the next one. Moving on to bag number three. I'm actually really enjoying going about it this way because it gives me more breaks in between and it's a whole lot more tidy. I don't have Tupperware everywhere. I have room for the real instructions. Everything I need is in one bag. It's almost like Lego intended it this way or something. I don't know. Maybe it's too much work, but I'm almost thinking about, like, replicating this, even with used sets. Like, separating all the pieces out into what they would have been in the bags if they were sealed. I'm thinking about it, at least. Anyway, we're gonna build his legs now. And this is where the parts usage gets really cool, and the recolors get pretty awesome. So, first of all, we have these in uh, dark green which is great, but especially we have Vakama Hordika heads in dark green as well, which is a super awesome looking piece. I love that. All right. Scoot, scoot, scoot all this over here. Let's, uh, you know what, actually, even though I just, uh, <laughs> just, Talked about Tupperware being a little cluttery. And earlier in the video, I also ditched it halfway through. For the first little while, at least. This is actually kind of useful to uh, separate all the small bits, just like that. Okay. Awesome. So, should we build these together or individually? Uh, I'm gonna build them together. I'm gonna test my luck. So, there, there, and then. So 
always the Technic heavy builds that I find myself messing up, so. Definitely gotta be careful. Okay. Cool, now, this piece. This is just a really cool foot design, and it really confuses me why they used this for uh, Liwa Fantoka and not Pohatu Fantoka, because it's like literally a toe piston. It seems like a no-brainer, but hey. Who knows what they're thinking. And then we need another one of these, like that. And that goes there. Okay. Same on the other side. And, oh. There we go. Cool. So far, so good. So far, I think this is paying off. A little more heel support. I don't think these legs are actually as complex as I thought they were. So far they seem pretty simple. I guess it's just like the unorthodox uh, Hordika head <laughs> that makes me think they're a little bit more involved than they actually are, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, who knows. Piston, once again, goes on there, let's build another one. go. Cool. Now, these, here and here, and old school friction extenders. Oh yeah. These things uh, famously degrade over time. Uh, they're really nice when they're new because the rubber is like uh, nice and has a lot of friction but as they go on uh, they start to become a floppy mess ironically even though that's what they're supposed to be designed to prevent. Um, unfortunate the new friction extenders are a whole lot better the CCBS system ones so that's good. But they use these for like a long time. So it's always a gamble when you get a new one because it's either gonna be super tight. Did I say new one? I meant used one. I don't recall. I'm already forgetting the things I said two seconds ago. So that's a good sign. But sometimes it's tight, sometimes they're loose if you're getting a used set, and uh, that can be annoying. Fortunately, this one is brand new, so we don't have to worry about that. For a little while, at least. Okay. So, got some, got some thighs. This is basically like the classic... 0607 structure here. That sort of thing for the upper thigh, this sort of thing for the lower leg. Yep. No surprises here. For the most part. Okay. So. Two of those, then, oh, 
Okay, here's where it gets interesting. We got these guys. These little friends. And huh. Goes through there. And goes on there, like that. Okay. Okay. That's a little more solid than I was expecting it to be, so that's nice. And same thing on the other side. The uh, color mixture is a little bit different on this one than it is on this one, which is always super annoying to me. That's, that's kind of disappointing. And I don't think this is a very, uh, very cheap piece either because it only comes in, you know, this single limited edition set. So if I want to break link another one to make them match, uh, it might cost me a little bit, but oh well. I don't know if you can even see that on camera, but hopefully you can. <laughs> All right, so this goes here. I wonder what that's for. Oh yeah, attaching this. If only every question like that got immediate, an immediate answer, an immediate source of gratification like that. But there you got some legs. Oh, and it, hey, there you go. Said times two. It is literally just symmetrical. So dodged a bullet with that one. Great. Awesome. There you have, there you have some legs. Oh yeah, before we move on to bag four, we're first being told to attach the legs here. So, there, and there, we have the bottom half of a Karzani man. All right, cool. What's next? Arms, head, and cape assembly. So I think I think that's everything. This is the last bag, so here we go. Anything cool and interesting in here? Chain links. He's got his fiery suffering chains or whatever because you know edgy satan man pretty cool uh yeah and then he's got like elec heads for hands so that's neat. More of these. Uh, some of those. And some of these. Okay, cool. Huh. Seems like a lot less pieces than I was expecting. But oh well. Um, arms. Are the arms the same? I'm actually going to go ahead and see if it tells me to times two. It doesn't because the hands are different, because he holds on to a squid launcher up here. All right, cool. Well, I'm just gonna do it how the instructions tell me to in that case. Gonna stop being an overachiever this time. You know, like the whole concept of Karzani, I suppose was a little bit confusing because you have Karzani, the place, <laughs> named after the person, Karzani, uh, who then had a plant named after him. So in, in 2004-ish, we had the Karzani plant, which was like the prototype for the Morbizak plant. Uh, that was in a book and also in a video game. Um, so that was Karzani. 
the Karzani plant. And then in 2006, we learned about the place Karzani. All right, cool, I guess it's a place. Oh, but also it's named after an, another another person. All right. Real inventive there. <laughs> Naming three things Karzani. And then, to make things more confusing, in the book that we first saw a depiction of Karzani, was that... Was that 2008? No, that had to have been 2007, right? 2000, maybe 2006? I don't even remember. When was the Bionicle World? When did that come out? 2007? I don't remember. Anyway, in the book, when they talk about Karzani, I believe, uh, they describe him as, like, he's got, like, black and gold armor. And then... In Bionicle World, we see him depicted with, like, purple and green. And then here, he's just green. So, alright. Not only is there three different Karzanis, but one of those Karzanis also has, uh, <laughs> like, three different appearances in the story. Awesome. And of course, like, the one we got as a set is, like, Fishman Karzani, which is whatever. I've already talked about that. Um, robot hands. These are for holding on to squids, I imagine. Almost actually done with this arm, it seems like. Okay, Elec Face becomes a claw. I'm not sure how I feel about this, because it's like weird and translucent-y and like nothing else on the figure is this way, so it kind of seems a little bit out of place, honestly. But, uh, hey. He's got these weird claws. And these don't seem to fit in very well. Okay. Am I just doing something wrong, or is that how it goes? Because that seems really finicky. Huh. Alright, well, we have another chance to uh, try this out, so I guess I'll wait till the other claw to see if that's all good. Boom. That's a hand. And... What, what, is, what is the point of this? Hmm. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we won't. But... Well, maybe it attaches his chain. That makes sense. These, these little... These little claws do annoy me, though. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's attach one of these arms here. Bring in the rest of the body. And it just goes on there, like that. Cool. Neato. Uh, go away for a minute. Well, I presumably build the other arm, which is probably very, very similar. So, there you go. Yep, so far it's exactly the same. <laughs> Maybe I should have built both of the upper arms together at least, but too late now. That's fine. Spikes, spikes, spikes. It has the same problem that, like, the Axolara vehicle has, where these spikes are on these little rotating bits, and they always, like, spin around and get misaligned, and that always really annoys me. Yeah. 
Okay. Now, nope, still the same. Everything, everything is still the same. The hands are ever so slightly different, and so they make you build it twice instead of just sand. Build it at the same time, nerd. And then this side also has this bit. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe he holds the chain with both hands. Or maybe it just gives you the option. I'm just assuming that that's... <laughs> so you can... Uh, Hold the chain. I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's see if this has the same problem. Nope, still, still rather loose. So, oh well. And this goes here. Yep, that, that right there is the only difference. Although, I need to attach this first. So. So there. There you go. All right. Come on. Line up. <laughs> oh boy, we're getting, we're getting there. We're getting to that point where uh, motor skills start failing. Okay, and then this is presumably, yes, so that he can hold squid launcher like that. Neat. And other arm. Complete. We are almost there. Just got the head and the cape to go. Then we'll give him a chain. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Squids. Squids go on his arms. For storage. This, these claws, man. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So those go in there. Well, kind of just dangles. <laughs> Squids are... Uh, I'll tell you this, 2007 wasn't great with its projectile gimmicks. Say that much. Squids and finicky darts. That's what you got. Here's the uh, instructions on how to fire that. They also needed to make uh, an additional video to show you how to fire them because nobody could figure them out. Actually, I'm gonna set this guy back here for just a moment because I'm gonna need him in a second while I build his chain. How many links is that? 20? Um, and, uh, oh yeah, actually he splits his chain up into two and has one on each arm. That's what those things are for. Okay, interesting. I guess you could link the two chains together. There's nothing stopping you. But, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there's one. Let's see if there's exactly 20, or we have some left over. Two, three, four, Exactly 20. Cool. My favorite part of the let's build was when he counted for two minutes. 
Oh boy. Okay. Squid falling off. It would be cool if you could see this. <coughs> Get out of the way for just a second. Instructions. There we go. There's his chains. And you can kind of loop them between the claws here. You know, the finicky little wiggly claws. Yeah. And yeah, there we go. He's got chains on his wrists. Super cool. All right. <laughs> One last time, uh, go over there while I build your head. Almost there, boys. Almost there. All right. Some of the coolest parts usage and one of the coolest recolor, recolored pieces in the entire line, in my opinion, are the dark green Pridak feet. Those were in one of the extra little bags there. Um, okay, so this is, yeah, four. And yeah, okay. I think we're good. I think that goes like that. And then that slides through there. That slides through there. So he's got a little like mandible bug face and like this thing that goes out back. I don't know, it's a cool head design. It just doesn't scream Karzani to me because his mask all but disappears. Oh well. Uh, huh, okay. That goes like that. And then, I, is this the six long? Yes. Those go down there, and then that goes like there. There we go. I mean, I do really like this. <laughs> I do really like, uh, like I said, I like the parts usage. I do think it looks cool, personally. But also, yes, I wanted a, uh, you know, a normal Karzani. It all, honestly might have been easier to attach these pieces before I slid the halves of the head together. It's kind of weird that it has you doing this step now, because this is really kind of, kind of finicky, getting, like cramming this piece in there, but oh well. Slide the eyes in, and then, These go in here on the other side. We're getting somewhere. Got the little spikes. I guess he does have like the little horns that he has in like the the art from that book. So like and, and I mean he has like spikes all over him. So like there is some semblance of Karzani here. It's not like completely abstract, but there's his head. What a handsome man. All right. Uh, you go here and here. So the head can like, yeah, I guess it can turn. It's attached at two points, but it's designed in such a way that it can still turn and you still get all that articulation, which is good. Whoa, bump the camera, move that back. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, finally, cape. I got these pieces. Make sure everything's lined up here. Good. 
And we got the cloth cape once again here, just like on uh, Vazon. And this one, I believe, actually uses the uses the holes, like the little tattered holes in the cape, as part of the build, which is interesting. You kind of like slide these pieces through here, and then. Huh, interesting. And then these, like, hold everything in place. Like that. Oh wait, no. I did it wrong. Oh no, this is gonna be... Oh, slightly less annoying than I anticipated. Just having flashbacks to like trying to get connectors out of Rakshi heads. That is that is the worst. <laughs> um, but those secure everything like that. Then we got these. Which go here. And here. And then. Oh, and then the tubes also go through these holes here. Interesting. Okay, and then where do the tubes connect? Just so that I can... They connect to the back of the head. All right. Awesome. I don't need this anymore. Instructions, be gone with you. Let's finish this guy up. See if I can avoid bumping the camera again. Wouldn't be one of my let's builds if I didn't bump the camera at least once, let's be honest. Those go through there like that. Actually, I didn't see where these attached. Might have been helpful. Don't mind me. Oh, they attached to like the neck. Interesting. Ooh, can't even see that. Yeah, they go in here like that. Awesome. Oh, hmm. This is, this is a thing. <laughs> and then these plug in to the back of the head. Oh, and his squid launcher fell off. Let's uh, put that back. All right, there is the, the Lord of Suffering himself. There is Karzani in all his glory? So I guess I was thinking about things a little bit wrong because I went back and skimmed the serial that this briefly takes place in, and uh, it all actually happens after Makuta breaks Karzani's mind, but it's literally just like, oh, we had this trap set up, and then, and then Karzani gets trapped, and then Botar takes him away. The end. Like, it's literally like two paragraphs long that this actual scene makes an appearance. So, while I was wrong, I was right about it being disappointing. That said, this set is pretty awesome. I actually really like the the atmosphere it has with like all of these characters kind of playing a role and there's like a goal in mind. There is that like conflict in the box. And even though Karzani is super weird and his build is really unwieldy and, and strange, I think he's pretty cool. So, first impressions on this set, I I am... I'm pretty happy with it, all things considered. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this random, unexpected video, and uh, until next time, this has been Rollout, signing off. Oh yeah, and here are all the extra parts. I know some people appreciate that, so uh, there you go.